But yeah, it's crazy. I think this is like a full circle because four years ago, SoundCloud, a few uh, messages and a few emails. I was just like, I was just scrolling through your SoundCloud. We had just launched the White Label series at the time. Yeah. And uh, I remember I just reached out. We had never met in person, but the music is what connected us. Yeah. And I was like, yo, I really, I really... Uh, connect with your music um at the time you were making a lot of like you're like uploading beats every day and it was inspired by by dilla and just that whole sound of like jazz and hip-hop and the fusion of soul just all together and you weren't even singing yet really it was, uh, it wasn't you, mine yeah, you, yeah, yeah 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 you were just, just making at, beats yeah you were in time. school and i believe at the time you were like 18 years old or 17 one of the two 17 yeah yeah and uh yeah it's, it's amazing to see you know where you are right now just a thing from the bedroom to here and it's just it's just dope man it's, it's the first time that we've had you on selection radio tom mish how you feeling yeah, brother good man yeah yeah tired but good yeah really same good. Uh, jet lag yeah <laughs> um, yeah man you just played at uh, oakland how was that it was sick it was really good man it was um it was like the biggest show we've done yet on this tour i think it was like 2500 people man it wow. was like a big big theater um it was banging like really enjoyed it i mean we've got a whole new set um new lights and stuff new new set list so it's just it's nice to be playing new right. stuff you know? is uh most of this tour is it based around geography off the new album um yeah it's the geography tour yeah but we're playing old stuff as well and you know all a few sorts. classics here and there yeah yeah isn't it such a trip i mean just to go from your bedroom and 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 how do you feel now you know, you're playing in front of thousands of people. You're not just doing intimate small rooms. You're doing solid rooms. You're doing festivals, and uh, have you have you adjusted to that? Like, how do you feel? Like, you ever comfortable? Or yeah, it's it's, it's weird. Like, I, I still have moments. Like last night, I was um, I was kind of, I I kind of have moments where I'm looking at the crowd and like there's so many people and I get distracted and I'm like, my life's a bit crazy. <laughs> like, this is just a bit crazy. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And then you get distracted, so I stop thinking about the song that I'm singing, and then I forget lyrics and stuff. So you got to be careful. Yeah. Because you, you, I do have those moments a lot, man. Yeah. It's just, it, I don't think it will ever sink in, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's what I enjoy about you is how um, grounded and humble you are. Even your your guys, your your, your bandmates, um, everyone's just really musical and about the sound. It, ain't, it isn't really about anything else. When I ran into you in Manchester in June, uh, it was at Park Life Festival. Yeah, man. And that was actually the first time that I've seen you live um, after all these years. Because when we played together, you did a DJ set. I did a DJ set, yeah. Yeah, but this was the first time I've seen like a real official Tomish set. And you didn't even know I was there. I was just in the crowd. I had played earlier in the day. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I got to go see Tom. And it was just crazy, man, just to think of where it all started because I know I, I watched you you know elevate and then just to see all the people uh, people were were singing your lyrics word for word and it was amazing because there were songs and, and, and segments of, of your whole performance where you didn't say a word you were just playing yeah, playing yeah, away yeah, on the yeah. guitar and um, yeah I think you have a really good audience you know it's, they're like really educated with your sound and stuff like that so it was, it was really cool to see man um, you got LA, you got back to back shows as well. Yeah, and then yeah. you're also doing a, a Europe tour, right? Yeah. And you're doing crazy rooms. I, I was looking, I think at Brixton Academy, you got like yeah, two man. or three rooms. Two, and two nights at Brixton. Yeah. 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 That's, that's amazing. Um, it's crazy, man. Yeah. I remember just like hearing you just talk about, you know, the, the fact of you wanted to break kind of just away from just being a producer and, and in the bedroom and you felt like using your voice because I know you grew up. Um, you know, going to, to choir school and I know your parents, you know, kind of like inspired you like, yo, you should use your voice more. Um, was that that transition going from a producer into a vocalist? Like, what was that like? Um, it was it felt quite natural, really. I, I kind of I've always sung a little bit like I was in. The, yeah, like, like you say, I, I was in the choir at school and stuff. Um, and then uh I just started singing on some joints and then they did way better. So I was like, I might as well just sing on all of them. And then I mm. started doing that and, uh, you know, got into songwriting. I'm a guitarist, so it's, it's kind of comes natural to sing with the guitar. And um, and yeah, I, I enjoy both sides now, you know. It's, it's a new element to, to, to making music. This was you know one I mean? of the first songs I heard you sing on with your sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. My voice sounds so different on this, it's crazy. 
let's get into it tom mish and shout out to your sister on that one laura mish yeah she produces and sings as well she does yeah yeah yeah. that's yeah, crazy man. how old is she she is 26 26 26 you guys grow up together like making music and and she's doing her own thing as a solo artist as well or is she more behind the scenes yeah man she's doing her own thing yeah, she's playing her own shows i think she's just done a tour um yeah is she signed yeah, cause you have a label i do yeah yeah, yeah the she's name not signed to my label she's not no no no, no. you guys uh, sit, do your own thing definitely man that's yeah, amazing yeah. it's i think it's, imp- it's not important i think it's important to not get too close with family and and the business side of music do you know what i mean yeah i want to keep it separate you know yeah follow, follow um, the groove is the name of your label when did you decide to create that and, beyond and, beyond the groove or beyond the groove yeah, 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 yeah. yeah beyond the groove when did you uh, decide to, to create that um well i was kind of just i wanted to release music under my own label and then it was just kind of like thinking of a name and my mom was like just came up with that name and i was like i dig that so yeah we just rolled with that man yeah pretty pretty simple and your, your parents yeah. are obviously coming from a musical background very yeah. support I always every guest that comes in i always stress especially if there's new listeners um that support from the family yeah and your mom and your sister where they do the artwork as well for for some of your releases they do yeah, yeah that's yeah, crazy yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's nice man does, um, your, does your mom ever come on on tour to some of the shows no no, no, no my dad does. He, he does he loves coming on tour okay but um but my mom's never come to show i mean she comes to shows but you know she doesn't my dad loves the whole experience you know coming on the bus meeting the crew he loves all you know that sort of thing so um, you studied uh music technology and then uh, jazz guitar in school right yes. yeah, and yeah. uh did you feel like going to school did it enhance you know your your artistry or did you feel like most of the stuff you learned is self-taught and, and outside of outside of school um most of it is outside of school but school kind of i did music technology um for sixth form and that that allowed me to to learn how to make beats and then the rest is just like sitting on the bus going to school listening to jay diller you know robert yeah. Clasper, these guys jazz yeah and um it's, it's all kind of you know you have to love it you know some of those so guys like, in school, like Robert Glasper and, and have any of your peers, have they reached out to you? Um, Cause what? you have a song with De La Soul, you know what I mean? I, I like, do, yeah, 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 yeah. Like how does that feel growing up listening to these guys and now you're either playing it in festivals with them or, you know. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's the crazy thing, playing in festivals with them. Cause I'm not really working with, with like all the people I was listening to, but I am on the bills with them at festivals. So that's, that's, I love that, man. Yeah, it's sick. We have so a nice. dealer behind us right now. We're going to take a quick break. Once again, Tom Mish, Selection Radio, Beats 1. It's a full circle. It's been a long time coming, four years. This is uh, Earl off of Vintage Volume 2. And then we should probably get into another joint. Uh, Would you say Kareem Riggins? Kareem Riggins, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the influence. This makes sense why you love this one, that guitar, man. Yeah, it's just very breezy, man. It's a, it's a nice, nice feel. Feel good music. All right. Be right back. You also just dropped a, a color session. I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What, man, I gotta say those guys are killing it. The That's process nice, of, of when you're when you did you go to Germany to to record that session? Yes, yeah, man. That's yeah, nice. Shot in Berlin. Yeah. They're quite secretive about how they go about it. Yeah, nah. Um, I, I so can I can't tell. say too much, but they they smash it, man. Yeah, they're, they're a know? great group of, of people. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I've been following their work, and I just love how widespread they are, and just how they do a mixture of putting on new artists. Yeah. And also you know bringing in artists that are that people love and it's mm-hmm. kind of just like a great blend that, yeah, was that your first or second time on there second time actually second time i think i was the first person to do two or something like Oops, that really so i was really chuffed when they yeah. asked i was like yeah this is sick. i love them man yeah that's yeah, amazing yeah. how has it been for you um you know because i feel like once you started using your voice um breaking out of that the soundcloud community you know just being labeled as as a producer or, or beat maker um how was that transition? Because, you know, especially right now, SoundCloud is in an interesting place where, yeah. you know, like for people like you and I, we go on there and we dig, right? We know where to find certain things just for yeah. like easy listening or for DJ sets. Right. But there's a lot of people who, you know, are on Apple Music and so forth. And they're just, mm. they, you know, that they don't necessarily listen to beats the way you and I do or listen to Dilla like that. Mm. Um what what did it take for you did you feel like you know to break away and break you know kind of progress into that next level outside of soundcloud um 
I think that's that's when my my, my manager came in and kind of, um, he, you know, because I was I was always like I just want to drop music for free on SoundCloud. I was like I don't have to make money from it. And then obviously you know, you have a team who are like no, you need to you need to earn a <laughs> living from this. You need to and, and um and yeah, I guess you kind of just flow onto other platforms. You know what I mean, I started you know working with Spotify and Apple and and you and then um it just kind of grew, but um. But yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of some other people on SoundCloud that's, you know, in, in like some... Like Keitra. Yeah, Keitra Nada, man. Um, but he, he's like the king of SoundCloud, man. <laughs> he's, he's the king. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so no, I, I've noticed that and I, and I think it's great. Mm. Um, is there anything that you would recommend for uh, an upcoming producer, an artist in order to, you know, um, I guess kind of follow the same footsteps? Just because you don't want to be labeled as just like a, a beat maker but what, one thing that i notice about you is um how easy it is for you to work with artists did that come natural yeah. of, of work because when you work with um different vocalists or different producers it seems really natural yeah, and yeah, for yeah. some people you know some people are introverts and, mm -hmm. and uh you know making beats at home and, and privately versus mm -hmm. being in a, in a session or in a studio are two different worlds like did you go through that um that period where did it, would it ever feel uncomfortable or were you always kind of just a natural? Not really, man. Um, yeah, it helps if you like the person that you're working with. You know, that helps if there's a vibe in the room. But I kind of just started by working with mates. So I'd invite friends around, you know, it's in my bedroom, pretty relaxed. You know, it's, it's yeah. not like uh, I wasn't like going to like studios with tons of people there. So it was chill, man, from from, from the start. And, and when um, you're creating, um, you know, what software are you using? I use Logic. Logic. Always use Logic, yeah. Hey, I want to get into Ableton, but I use Logic. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. it's all about what you're comfortable on. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I even saw the session with you and FKJ, and he he's a beast. I mean, obviously, we've seen what him and Masego did. Yeah. Um, you know, and he seems like a great person to work with. Who who are some other favorites um, that you enjoy? Like, you just have great chemistry and just, you know, are you just sitting on, on any... You know bodies of work that that are unreleased with someone specifically producer or vocalist. Mm. Um, Loyal Connor from the UK. Yeah. Um, we both love. We have a love for like Slum Village, Jay, like Jay Dilla, that kind of world. And and um, I think our, our like understanding of that kind of music means that we, when we get in the studio, we're always like, let's try and make something on this tip, and then we we do that, and it. I don't know. It works out, man. Yeah. So he's he's dope. You know who was I on really the show like recently is a uh, Boz from Dreamville, and uh, he was saying that he uh, sampled your work. Uh, oh yeah, 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 Boz. Come back. Yep. The track called Come back. Yeah, yeah, man. So shout out Boz. He was he recently like showed a lot of love to you. Uh, you've done some work with Gold Link, who we who we've worked with, and mm -hmm. it's great to see what he's done and to yeah. see another person that came up in SoundCloud, but to take it to the next level and have a, a song like you know get, get a almost get a Grammy for it, but be Grammy nominated and and get a plaque. You know what I mean? So I think that's dope. I yeah, know Georgia definitely. Smith is inspired by your sound. I remember uh, reading, I think actually there was like some demos that came out and she was uh, singing over your music. I'm not, I'm not sure if you, uh, have you, yeah, have you two ever connected? Um, we've, we've never got in the studio, but I sent her a beat and she recorded, I think it's on her album. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't know she was influenced by yeah. I mean, man, didn't yeah, know man, that. that's amazing. And then uh, Sam Wills, you have Bar Barney's playing Sam with Wills, you. Sam Wills, yeah, Barney on, on, on tour. Yeah, man, he's from the UK. A couple a UK of days. Uh, MC rapper. Yep. yep. Yeah. Jordan and Rakai. Jordan Rakai. I mean, all these people. Yeah. Um, yeah man, that's dope. SoundCloud era, man. Yeah. I look, I look back with you know very fondly. It was, it was a good time, man. I missed the SoundCloud days. Yeah, you know me I mean? too. I miss it, man. Yo, me too. Um, but you know what? I think it, it's just part of the growth and it's, it's mm -hmm. nice to see, to just break away from that. We took that and now yeah, playing yeah, in front yeah. of sold out shows and, and yeah, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. If you could, if you could have a, a dream team, uh, you know, band of like vocalists and, and just, you know, some of your favorite, like, you know, players, who, who, who would it be? Who would you love to collaborate with? Um, Anderson Pack. Yeah. I mean everyone wants to work with Anderson, but, <laughs> but Anderson man. Um I wanna I wanna make beats for some some big rappers. Um Kendrick, Q tip. Yeah. Really wanna work with Q tip. Buster Rhymes. Yeah. Don't know if he's still doing stuff, I wanna work with him. Okay. Um yeah, that's, that's a solid that's a solid lineup in itself. Yeah, man. Can we actually get into uh something from geography right now? Definitely. What, what's what song are you thinking? 
Uh, let's play Water Baby. Water Baby. Featuring Lo Kana. All right, let's get into it right now. And I get a uh, Robert Glasper vibes on this. So yeah, good. definitely, man. W your process when you're creating is it you mm. just kind of like just freestyling, or do you you know when you're collaborating with other with other artists and producers? Yeah, man. How does how does your process work? Um, so th this isn't me on keys. I wish this was me on keys. Who is this it is, on this keys? is a guy called Ruben James. Uh, he plays for Sam Smith and he does his own stuff as well. He's he's insane, man. But um, a lot of people say they get a Robert Glasper vibe from that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, I love it, man. Yeah, he's insane, man. Um, one thing that stood out to me is someone asked you, uh, what does success look like to you? And you uh, responded, uh, you know, success to you, it just means like, doing what you love and having people appreciate it i think that's so amazing in other words saying doing what you love and and it doesn't matter you know how many people are listening to your record or, or how big your show turnouts are or the yeah. number side of it it's just about being appreciated and, and you as an artist being able to express yourself i think that's amazing that's yeah. something that we really stand by yeah man you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah definitely man yeah and i think and, i think i think you should also enjoy the process do you know what I mean? I think that's 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 an aim as well. Yeah. To enjoy it all. Do you know what I mean? Because if you don't enjoy it, then you know. Have there been moments that like been you know some some rough patches or like just in your journey just getting to this point? You know, were there parts where you doubted or you know just got to a point where you're like ah you know do I want to keep doing this or was everything has everything been pretty persistent for the most part no it's definitely it's stressful man it's really stressful you know yeah. it's um we're talking about right now this the even like in, lack of sleep and being jet lagged yeah touring's really really hard man and people don't see the the kind of tiring side of it i mean they, they see it as like glamorous you get to go to loads of places and stuff but obviously it's like quite tiring man um but i'm i'm happy you know yeah it's, uh, it's, so it's better than being at a, you know something that we're not happy at and you know, you think about even you, you travel with a big team. Yeah. And it's different when, you know, you're a DJ or just like a smaller crew, smaller band. But when you're traveling with all the instruments, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have your tour manager, you have, you know, your people. Your, it's just it's a lot, a lot of logistics, making sure Definitely everyone's up. Yeah. Lobby call. Um, sometimes you're eating <laughs> once a day, you know, yeah. all those things and yeah, 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 sleeping yeah, yeah. two, three hours. And I'd love to just be a DJ man for a day, <laughs> bring a memory stick on tour. <laughs> Well, it's but funny because you you still you DJ still a little bit, man. I want to do more of it actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not it? I'm not like a proper DJ, man. But you enjoy like but playing I, I love the tunes. It, man. Yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I love that. I need to do it more. And and what's next for you? You know, after these tours and after these shows, like, what's your next move? So I'm working on um, a project with this drummer called Yusuf Days. Oh. And he's he's like one of the best drummers in the world. I think um, he's from the UK. He. Uh, he just plays, he can play so fast, man. And his pocket's crazy, do you know what I mean? His groove, his sense of groove and um, the stuff he listens to. He lo He's a big Mad Lib fan. He loves like Jay Diller and stuff. And um, Was he part of a group recently or no? That's not, that's not Yusef Kamal. So he's the drummer from Yusef Kamal. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're doing their own thing right now. I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, you're yeah. working with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. So it's a joint project. So it's kind of like, um, it's kind of more exper experimental than geography. And it's... um. It's kind of like uh, my old stuff, but with a live drama. Um, but I'm really excited, man. It's a step up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And is that going to be coming out through through the label? Yeah, through my label, man. Okay. Yeah. And, and on the last note, even through the label, how, how has that been as, you know, you owning your own music and, and just like that product? I think it's so dope that you just focus on being independent. Stuff yeah. Like that. It's great, man. I mean, I, I've never felt the need to... To sign to a big label because I don't want to be massive. Do you know what I mean? I don't want loads of money pumped into my project. Yeah. I want it to be organic and um, and I've got the point where I'm actually, like, I feel like I'm quite big already. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to get That's any crazy. bigger. <laughs> like it's enough. But, but you know, you, know? you are though. You are gonna get bigger. I am. <laughs> but if it, do you know what I mean? If it gets too too much, then I'm, I'm chilling. You chilling? I mean? Well, so do so you? I'll, I'll start a new Elias or something. You, you know? think so? I think so, man. Yeah, because okay. I don't want to. I don't want to get too big. That's great. I mean, that's humble, man. I mean, it, I don't, it would you're, be you're stressful, bro. It's it, not like. Well, why? Why do you feel it's stressful? Um. Because I don't. I don't want to be recognized on the street. That's real. 
I mean, it's, is, is it's that not... hap- is that happening already when you're back home? Yes, yeah, it's, it's happening, man, and I, I don't like it. Because <laughs> um, you, so... you just want to be like low key. You're a low key person. Yeah, I, w- I want to be low key. Lo- like, exactly, man. Um, it's you know, it's just a bit stressful going on a night out with your mates and people like want to take a picture. Exactly. You're trying to eat. You're just yeah. trying to chill. Yeah, that's I, the collateral of it. Some people love it, but I I don't like that side of it. So yeah. um, so that's yeah. It's kind of a push and pull situation. You know, I wanna yeah. I wanna make music. I love making music, but I don't wanna. You wanna be more behind the scenes and focus just strictly on the on the musicality of what you do. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Nah, I respect that, man, and I and I feel you one hundred percent. Um, but yeah, man, I wanna thank you for coming on the show. Um, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you get back, get some rest. And uh, I'll be coming out to uh, the Palladium, and Wicked, I already know a bunch of these shows are about to sell out. So, want to wish you uh, good energy, man. Good rest, eat well, and um, yeah, man, just stay doing what you're doing, man. Again, you're you're inspiring so many people. I don't know if you, I don't know if you realize, but a lot of a lot of people when I when I told some folks that you were coming on the show, they were super hyped. So, um, yeah, man, it's been great, and uh, I'm sure I'm gonna see you along the way across the yeah, world. Man. So, yeah, man, big ups, Tom Mish. Thank you for having me, man. Of I'm course. glad we could do this finally. Yeah, yeah finally we you. made it happen. Hey, the timing is so perfect right now. Um, Selection Radio 381, Peace One. Hey.